Hello and welcome back to the studio. So a grey shirt can only mean one thing. I'm going to show you a product or a, pro, uh, or a process. And uh, it's a process that I'm going to be looking at today. And I want to show you how to make egg tempera because... Um, the other week, I showed you how to make egg glare. Now, paint manufacturing is, is, is something really close to my heart, and I enjoy the, all, the, all the processes and the history that paint has brought with it. And I just wanted to share my, my love of paint with you as well. And in previous episodes, I've showed you how to make acrylic paint. So they're all in the iCards there and in the descriptions below. So, and, and don't forget to click subscribe and get notifications on a weekly basis because I upload every Monday at 7.30. Right, without the waffle, let's just get straight on to what we've got here. You're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need some um, kitchen paper or kitchen roll. You, you're going to need something to stir paint with. I got a palette knife in this case. Um, it's important because we're using fine pigments that we got a pair of latex gloves and a mask and that's only for the the uh, processing of the pigment which i will show you in a second um we're going to need some eggs um in this particular instance i'm using large welsh free range eggs because i live in wales and um the fresher the better i've got two in there that are quite old and i got two in there that are fresh so i want to see the difference i got a couple of containers there for mixing my paint in i've got a bowl um just for separating my egg whites i've got a little pipette and i've also got um some distilled white malt vinegar there so um we'll explain we don't need a lot of that that's gonna last you years i've had that for years in fact Okay, so let's have a look at our eggs. Um, let me just take that little pin out. So I've got, these are the fresh ones, these are the stale-ish ones. I wanted to see the difference. So I'm gonna try off with an egg that's been sitting on my desk. These two eggs have been sitting on my desk for about a fortnight. And I want to see the difference in this particular egg in the yolk. There's, um, there's inside there is white and yellow. Now, the yellow part has got a skin around it, which is a membrane, which we need to separate. So, without further ado, let's, let's separate that. Just crack it in the egg. You can see that, you hopefully you can see, that that's quite a runny, a white egg. It doesn't smell. It's still edible. And there's date stamps on these eggs now. That's something they didn't have in medieval times. They didn't know how old an egg was going to be, but day to day we got date stamps on them, so it gives you an idea. So if you're not sure, check the date stamp on the egg. And just separate in the white from the yolk. Takes a little bit of practice, takes a little bit of time. This is quite stringy this this oak this uh, white. And we we can keep the white to make egg layer with it. And there's a big fly or a wasp or something buzzing around my head in the studio. I hope it's not a, a wisp. Now that actually has broken the yolk. So the yolk is not that strong. I'm hoping that I can... No, it's it's gone. So the membrane on that particular egg is not good at all. So the older eggs definitely not so I'm just gonna clean my hands a minute what I will say at this point is if you're using eggs and things like that don't forget um, salmonella and, and all that so if you're gonna use eggs at anywhere make sure you clean up really well in warm soapy water so let's try a fresh egg so obviously um, the uh, older eggs are not that good because the membrane is quite thin and I wanted to test that because I've heard that uh, the fresher eggs are better but we'll see as I said it's a trial and error it's the membrane on the, the yolk part that we want we get our little bit of kitchen paper. Let's put that bowl safe. I don't want to drop that. Get a bit of kitchen paper and we roll the yolk on our hands like that. And what that's doing is taking off the egg white and 
drying off the membrane on the egg yolk and that is what you couldn't do on an older egg because the membrane is so thin once that's dry we should be able to get that hold it like this there you go you see I'm holding it like that then I'm going to just pierce the membrane keeping the membrane in my hand you should see the membrane there can you see the membrane stuck to my thumb there you go that's the membrane and then we discard that part there's the membrane there you can see there's the membrane it looks gross doesn't it that's the membrane okay again I'm gonna wipe my hands so we've got some egg yolk that's what we wanted the fluid out of that egg yolk there you go so let's just discard this paper I'm wiping my hands now at this point um, I'd like to get a scales um, and I'll show you why in a minute and we zero the scales with a with a pot on there which is the same pot as this one so with the zero there we know that that stake scales have taken into account the plastic so when we put that on there it reads 15 grams so there's 15 grams of um, egg yolk in there now we need to add the same amount of water now I use distilled boiled water in this case because it doesn't go moldy or or it doesn't it basically it's it's pure water there's, there's nothing in there there's no chlorine fluoride all, all that other stuff that the these companies put in so we need to put some same amount of water in so that's 15 grams we said basically all we're doing now is making an emulsion That's, if you think about it this this um this is when you you add oil and eggs together to make a mayonnaise so you're looking at about the same type of thing the pipette comes in and the dis distilled malt vinegar comes in at this particular point um because we want just one drop and this is not going to affect the paint in my experience one drop of distilled malt vinegar you can see why it takes uh, last so long <laughs> And then we all we need to do then is add that to our egg yolk. Keep that because it's not dirty. And then we mix that together. You basically mix in an emulsion. Now there is another egg temper which uses oil and stuff like that. Um, which I will be looking at in another lesson. It's basically the same, it's just adding oils. You can add different types of oils, which I'll explain. You might be wondering why these seashells are there. I got seashells. She sells seashells on the seashore. Well, when um when they make when they were painting the illuminations and stuff in the medieval times, and I was telling you about glare that uh, there's that's in the, in the eye cards there. Um, they reckon that mixing um the glare. And which is like a watercolor uh, paint, medieval paint, and, and obviously this, it, the seashells tend to add to it. Don't know. So I thought I'd go and get a couple and find out. <laughs> there you are. There's your egg tempera base made. Always remember the same amount of water per egg yolk. Now. At this particular moment in time, I stress that you should always use a dusk mask and some gloves. I'm not going to do that because I'm just warning you that I'm, I, I'm just going to take a chance. But because of the fine particles of this stuff, this, this is um, Welsh ochre that I've, I've found and sourced. Again, in the iCards, you'll see me collecting samples of rocks and things like that. And I process this. This is Welsh oak ochre taken from an iron ore mine not, not far from myself. So I thought I'd use a bit of that. This is um, bone black. And um, we had a, a bonfire going. 
um, a while ago and um, we chucked some animal bones on there and burnt them all down to get them really black and then I ground some of them up so I've got bone black. These are all traditional um, methods. Mask and gloves are very, very important because particles of this uh, pigment can get airborne. It is very, in, very important that while it's in powder form, you use those. I'm not doing it for the filming because I only want to use a small sample. If I was doing this on my own, I'd always wear protection. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of, just a little bit, just for the, for the sample sake, a little bit of pigment out onto our worktop there. And I'm just going to get my pipette and get my emulsion. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that slowly, slowly, slowly to my pigment there you go this is going to dry very very fast so bear it in mind always make little bits if you're going to do egg tempera painting i suggest you just mix what you need um, there's ways of slowing it down which we'll discuss on another video but as far as original tempera this is what we're doing the egg yolk is acting as a binder so it's going to bind those particles together and you can see this is a this is a lovely ochre that I've got here I'm quite quite happy with the pigments that I've managed to source um, around where I live in Wales um, I've gone down to the coast and I've gone inland I've gone to several spots and I've I know once you find this stuff then you can always revisit there Now, it all depends really how thin or how thick you want this. Um, I haven't painted in tempera myself yet. I'm getting prepared for it. But um, until I do that, which I will be doing, I'll be doing a, a, um, a video on, on a painting that I'm going to be doing in egg tempera. I would imagine it's quite a, a thinnish type of paint because you build up in layers very similar and this goes rock hard this will dry really 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 well and I will get I will get people asking me is it archival yes if it was good enough for medieval days and they still the illuminations and stuff are still surviving these days so yes it is very very archival this is as close to original uh, um, medieval paint as you can get and you're mixing your own it's fun it's enjoyable and you have great 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 pleasure in in experiment in this way it's not just all about acrylics and stuff like that um, I'm just trying to find a little canvas that I can just this uh, this is normally painted on I'll just let you know this is normally painted on um, boards and um, pieces of wood and stuff like that which again I'm going to be talking in a, another lesson about but just for sample sake I'm just going to paint a little bit of this onto this. Maybe you can use a bit of water to thin it, or you can just dip it into the egg tempera like that. That's quite a nice paint. I'll be interested to find out how that dries. Anyway, there we are. I'm going to put that one side. Because I've got a lot of cleaning up to do now. <laughs> got eggs everywhere. <laughs> got eggs everywhere. So there we are. Egg tempera. Traditional medieval egg tempera. Um, I'm going to be doing another lesson on oil temperas. Um, and this is all that I found out on internet and research and stuff like that. And I've got a greatest love of paint. So once you know how things work, you can experiment. You can have more fun and bring more, more stress-free paint into your world. That's what I say. So if you like what you've seen today, please subscribe. I upload every Monday at 7.30. And um, don't forget to click the notification buttons on, on the YouTube because you'll get notifications then of when I've uploaded. All Everything you need is in the descriptions below. There's iCards there if you want to go and have a look at those different processes that I've done. But from now until then, um, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy this. And I don't forget to give me a thumbs up and um, I will see you next time. Bye. Nice.